What would Video Game History Month be without celebrating the career of Nintendo's Shigeru Miyamoto, the creative mind behind some of gaming's most beloved characters and franchises, ranging from Mario and Zelda to Donkey Kong and those delightful Pikmin? And to think, none of it might have ever happened if it wasn't for the spectacular failure of a Nintendo arcade game named Radar Scope. Released in 1980, Radar Scope was a shooter similar to that of Taito's Space Invaders, and while it was popular in Japan, it failed to catch on in North America, and Nintendo of America was left with thousands of unsold units. Then Nintendo president Hiroshi Yamachi tasked Miyamoto working as a graphic and packaging designer at the time with recoding Radar Scope into something more appealing to the worldwide audience. Upon witnessing the success of Pac-Man and the emergence of side-scrolling games, Miyamoto came up with a final plan for a game that involved the popular cartoon character Popeye, since Nintendo was a licensee of the property. However, even though Miyamoto received final approval to move forward on the game, Nintendo learned that it was not allowed to move forward on the project due to licensing issues. Miyamoto and his mentor Gunpai Yoki scrambled to salvage the project and reworked it into something that wouldn't require a license, but would retain some of the same gameplay concepts. As a result, Donkey Kong and its protagonist Jumpman were born, and Nintendo had a huge hit on its hands. Of course, it wasn't until 1983 that we would come to know Jumpman as Mario when he appeared in another game called Mario Brothers. Influenced by manga artists at the time, Miyamoto sought using the same character across multiple projects, and so Mario was a logical choice for a new game. But there were issues in deciding exactly what he could do. Yokai suggested that Mario be able to jump and hit the floor beneath enemies to defeat them, but Miyamoto discovered that this made the game too easy. As a result, they added an extra qualifier for defeating enemies. Not only would players hit them from underneath, but they would also have to run up and kick them. These mechanics and even the characters eventually became the foundation for the Mario games that followed, including the incredibly popular Super Mario Bros., which became a premier game on Nintendo's then-new Nintendo Entertainment System. Mario went on to star in dozens of other games over the years, including new games in the Super Mario Bros. series, as well as games like Mario Kart, Paper Mario, and more recently, Super Mario Galaxy. Miyamoto parlayed his success with Mario into other projects, perhaps none more notable than the Legend of Zelda series. Said to be inspired by his adventures in Kyoto as a child, the Legend of Zelda series remains as one of gaming's most prominent franchises thanks in large part to Miyamoto's expertise in crafting sublime gameplay mechanics and intertwining them with rich worlds and endearing characters. While Miyamoto would go on to create several other prominent games over the course of his career, these days he has less hands-on involvement in the day-to-day -day work of creating games at Nintendo, but his perspective on what makes a game great is still a large part of Nintendo's methodology. If anything, his position as manager of Nintendo's EAD division has allowed him to instill his philosophy to a whole new generation of game designers at the company. But as any fan can probably tell you, his influence extends beyond the walls of Nintendo to an entire world of game creators and players that have been thoroughly entertained by his work throughout the years.